want to talk to you tonight about is identity. I cannot escape that. <laughs> but that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. In our Sunday our kids' church, um, every week the children get given a memory verse. And so it's been really fun as a family. We've been going through these memory verses and trying to memorize it. If we can't memorize it, how can we expect the kids to? So let me see how much I remember. Psalm 139, verse 14. Am I right? Yes. <laughs> How's it start? Ah, I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Okay, now I know that, but I'm under pressure here. I've got to get it right. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful verse. And I had a look at some of the verses around that verse. I love to see what else God was saying along the theme. And I want to read it to you tonight because it is so beautiful. I'm reading from the Living Bible. And this is what it says. You made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit them together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. It is amazing to think about. Your workmanship is marvelous and how well I know it. You were there while I was being formed in utter seclusion. You saw me before I was born and scheduled each day of my life before I began to breathe. Every day was recorded in your book. How precious it is, Lord, to realize that you are thinking about me constantly. I can't even count how many times a day your thoughts turn toward me. And when I awaken in the morning, you are still thinking of me. Did you know that? It's beautiful, isn't it? It's just, I keep reading it over and over again and thinking, wow, that's amazing. And the sad thing is that a lot of people miss life. They miss this. Many of us, we miss life because we're stuck behind a computer. And life, I tell you, when you're behind a computer, life flies by. Many of us miss life because we're just too busy. We are so busy doing that we don't get to live. We're surviving. Many of us miss life because we're in survival mode. We're, we are fighting to survive life on earth. But that's not what God intended. That's not what, what we were made for. One of the things that I absolutely love to do is to ponder, to marvel at creation. That's one of the best ways to get back in touch with God and, and get back in touch with His, His plan. And I really encourage you, whenever you can, often, do it regularly, take time to just look at any aspect of creation. Look at a sunrise or a sunset. Just really take it in. Look at a flower. Just look at it. Really look at it. Marvel. Say, wow, look at the veins and look at the colors. and look. Just really take time to marvel at it. It's when we get in touch with creation that we really get a glimpse of our Creator. And it's the same Creator that made the butterflies with all those veins and, and the amazing metamorphosis concept and, and, and the sky and the sea and the waves. and It's just phenomenal. It's that same Creator that created you and I. And as this verse says, you made all the delicate inner parts of my body and you knit them together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. You know, it's the same God that did all of that, that made us so specifically. He designed us. We are not an accident. No matter what your parents told you, none of us are an accident. God intended for every single one of us that are here tonight to be here, to be alive. And He designed us strategically, intentionally. The Bible calls it fearfully and wonderfully made. Now, if something's made fearfully, can you imagine somebody taking a brush and very carefully trying to fill in a detail? That's my, my interpretation of fearfully. You know, it's really carefully crafted. We are very important. We are very valuable. And one of the things that I like to encourage women to do is to first understand who they are and their value before they even get busy with the doing, before they even start to try and find their purpose in life and, you know, and, and get busy with stuff. Who are you? That's one of the most important questions that we can ask ourselves. If we can get to that place where we are comfortable with who we are and we can love who we are, then the doing is going to be easy. It's going to just come from inside and flow out of you. Life will never be easy. I'm not saying life is going to become a breeze. Life 
we'll have its ups and downs. That's life. We live on planet Earth and, and that's life. But, but doing life, you know, trying to figure out where to go and what to do, it will just naturally flow out of you. One of the other things that really struck me in this verse was, you saw me before I was born. He saw us. He's scheduled every day. Now that's the next important thing, is to know that God has a plan. Before we took our first breath, He scheduled every day. Every single day that we're alive and breathing has a plan. There's a plan for it. There's a purpose for our life. Uh, many years ago, um, I wrecked my first marriage. I ended up divorced. God's plan was here, and I was here, like really far off. And I was over here and I wanted to be back. Let's just call this God's perfect will. I really wanted to come back to God. I really knew that I had gone so far astray and I messed everything up. And I was walking to work one day and I was just natural to God. I was in London walking along the Thames and just contemplating what I'd been through and where I wanted to go to. And I said, okay God, well I guess it's plan B now then. And almost instantly, I heard God say to me, Angela, there's no plan B. It's always plan A with me. I was like, what do you mean? I said, God, I know, but I messed up plan A. I made a mess and I'm sorry, but, you know, let's start again. He said, yes, but it's always plan A. And that just blew me away. Now, I have no scriptural backing for that. that that's just my personal revelation, but that changed everything for me. I didn't feel like I'd messed up the first... 20, 30 years of my life and had to start again, it's always plan A. And I wonder how many of us tonight maybe are a little bit astray, we're a little bit from the plan and we think, oh well, I've messed up now, there's no point. It's always plan A with God. And no matter how far away we are from the plan, if we allow Him, He will always gently nudge us back. And I've had the most amazing journey from that day till this day. I've had the most phenomenal journey. I can see how God works all things together for good. And the great thing is, if you're here tonight and you love God, you cannot make a mistake. Did you know that? It doesn't exist. Because Romans 8.28 says, And God works all things together for good for those that love Him and are called according to His purposes. So all things, no matter what, it works together for good. So you can take your worst day, your biggest mess, you can take whatever it is that you perceive as a mistake or a failure, you take it to God, He turns it around for good. So basically, you cannot make a mistake, you cannot fail. He doesn't see it that way, we see it that way. We carry the guilt and shame. But God says, if you love me, I will turn all things, work them together for good. And that's phenomenal. You know how free you can live? If you take that on board, do you know how you don't have to stop trying to be good all the time? God is not looking for us to be good. Did you know that? It's another thing that just totally blown me away. All my life I tried to be good and guess what? I ended up being a very bad girl. <laughs> I was not a very nice person for many years. And I had this revelation that actually, as a mum, watching my children, I don't want them to sit still. Never get dirty, never play, never do anything, just to keep clean. I want them to live their life, I want them to get in the mud, and yes, I want them to make mistakes, because it's okay to do that. And it's the same with God. It's okay to live a little. I'm not talking about going around and do intentionally bad, sinful things. I'm not talking about that. I'm saying, on the journey of life, we make mistakes, but God turns all things around for good. He works all things together for good. And so we don't have to try and keep on this path and try and be perfect because we can't be, we are, but He is. And it's in that place where we are clothed with His righteousness that we find our freedom. Then there's the, the, this other part of the verse. There are three things that really struck me, but this, you're thinking about me constantly. Even while I was over here, totally off the path, even while I was over here doing goodness knows what I shouldn't have been doing, God was constantly thinking about me. He's thinking about us all the time and so if you are like I was and you're far away from God, you're over here, He's still thinking about you and He still desperately wants to help you, He desperately wants to lead you back to that path if you'll just allow Him. And maybe you've been a Christian a long time and you don't relate to any of this off the path stuff and you... But still, there's something inside of you that's unsatisfied. 
God is thinking about you. His thoughts towards you are good, not evil, for a future, for a hope. He's constantly thinking about you. And do you give him enough of your time? Do you, do you go to him enough and allow him to share his thoughts with you? Do you know what God is thinking about you? You can ask him. He'll tell you. You can read the Bible. It's all in there. His thoughts towards you are in the Bible. What I want to encourage you with tonight is every single one of your days are scheduled. There is a perfect plan. And when we get onto that perfect plan, I'm not talking about being perfect. Don't misunderstand. I'm not saying you want to be perfect. But God has a perfect plan. And when you can get into that groove, when you can get into that perfect plan, life is amazing. It is just the most amazing place to be. You're satisfied, you're fulfilled, you know you're doing what you're meant to do, even though some days are hard, some days you have down days, some days you have bad hair days, it happens. But there's something inside of you that, that goes beyond all of those things, and it's just this deep knowing, this deep satisfaction, this is where I'm meant to be. Now, few people find that path. And tonight I'm hoping that I can help every single one of us find that path. Now, first of all, if you're off the path, it's okay, because everybody goes off the path. Some are off the path here, yeah? some are just a little bit off the path, and some are on the path, but tomorrow they might go a little bit off. That's okay, because the path is not the precise thing you have to be on. God is going to keep on, keep on going like this, keep on bringing us back onto the path, and that, that's, that's okay. Some of us are off the path, and we know we're off the path, and we kind of intentionally keeping ourselves off the path. Either we feel guilty or ashamed or, I don't know, something happened and we don't want to get close to God right now or we're just being plain rebellious or we're just being plain silly. No matter what the cause of that is, bring it to God, give it back to Him and He's going to bring you back onto that path. Some of us desperately want to be on the path and we're fasting and we're praying and we're seeking God and we're begging God and we just can't find our purpose. You know, once you, you're confident in who you are, you don't have to worry too much about that. It will come out of you naturally. God has to take us through seasons. God has to take us through these patches where He refines us and, and sometimes it is confusing. But you know, if you want to be on the path and you're not sure, then maybe ask God, who am I? Am I being myself? Am I being who you created me to be? Or am I trying to be who I think I should be? Because that could be one of the things that's keeping you off the path. You see, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. That's what we have to get first. And then everything else will flow out of that. Just being. One of the ways to not figure out, but I think get in touch maybe with your true self, is to look at your childhood. Because when we were little, that's probably the closest we were to being our true self. And we hadn't learned to fake it yet. Okay, life hadn't got to us yet. So if you're struggling and you think, am I being me or am I trying to be who I think I should be? Just look back at who you were when you were a little girl. What did you love doing? Were you the one that was always gathering people together and, and, and organizing activities? Maybe you're a manager or you're a leader. Are you functioning in that capacity now? Or were you maybe the quiet one in the corner sucking their thumb? Have a, you know, consider that maybe you were a thinker or a writer or a songwriter or, you know, something introverted. But look back at who you were when you were a little girl and what came naturally then. Because that's probably the closest you'll ever get to see yourself being your true self. Um, and so that's a wonderful way to start to explore who you are. Another way you can find out the path, let's call it the path, or who you are, or all of those things, is do something. It's easier to steer a moving vehicle than it is to steer a stationary vehicle. So if you're not sure if you're doing what you're meant to be doing, or you're being who you're meant to be, do something. It's serving your church, or, or serve someone at work, or just do something. Get involved in something, and then in the doing, observe yourself. See what comes naturally. Don't hold it back. Just observe yourself. Come in and support the coffee shop. Come in. I don't know if there's jobs here or not, <laughs> but I'm just saying things like that. Do something and then see what you end up doing, what comes naturally. And then from there, you know, God will guide you and move you and help you. 
What else? Obviously, the most important thing is um, to get in touch with your creator. We made in his image. That was one of the other children's memory verses. <laughs> but this week, I remember that part. <laughs> She said, pardon me, I'm remem remembering the memory verses. <laughs> We're making his image. So obviously the best way to get in touch with who you are is to get in touch with the one that made you. And just simply ask, say, God, who am I? <laughs> no, but seriously, ask God, ask him, you know, who did you make me to be? What did you make me to do? I see so many amazing women here. And I don't know any of your stories. I don't know where you're from. I don't know your background. But I know that inside each and every one of you is something special. Inside each and every one of you is something that needs to come out. Some of you might have not discovered it at all. Some of you might be in the process. Some of you m might be flourishing and are able to help those that are not. But I know for a fact that inside each and every one of us here tonight, there's something special. There's something unique about us. And there's, there's a purpose for that something unique inside of us. And what I would hate to see is most of the women here tonight get to the end of their life and never have uncovered that something. So what is it? Leave here tonight unsatisfied in a good way. Leave here tonight stirred. Leave here tonight with a question. What is it? What is that inside of me that God has put? Because you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are unique. You are designed very specifically for a purpose. Are you living that purpose? Leave with a question. But leave with a knowledge that God has that very specific purpose for you. And he's not going to leave that question hanging. If you take that question to him, he will help you. So do you feel that you've, you're reaching your full potential? Do you feel that you're stretched to capacity and loving it and loving the life you're in? Or do you feel like you're in survival mode? Do you feel like you're just getting through the days? Or do you feel like you're frustrated and you're not happy with life? And every day there's this dark cloud over your head. Or do you feel like you want more but you, you don't know how to get it? Have a look at how you feel. And get in touch with the Creator, get in touch with who you are, and allow His purposes and His plans to flow out of you. And then I'll tell you something, what could happen with this group of women, it could change the world. If we all get to that place of, right, I know who I am, I love who I am, I'm confident in who I am, and I'm going to step out and do what I'm designed to do. Can you imagine what this group of women could do? So let's encourage each other, let's support each other. Let's get to know each other. Let's stir each other up. Let's push each other forward when necessary. Let's give each other a hug when we need to. But at the end of the day, let's help each other all get to that place where we're doing exactly what we're meant to do because we're confident in who we are. Can you imagine what we could do soon? So that's all I have to say.